but about your word and the value that it has in the lives of each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you for your word. And thank you most of all for him that died on cruel Calvary's cross. For it's in his name, Jesus the Christ's name, that we do pray and ask it all. If the family agrees, let us all say amen. amen. I still believe. Isn't it interesting that in the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, as we're able to recount the example of conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch, or what happened in terms of the eunuch's example of conversion, that ultimately before he was able to go down in that water to be baptized, mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38, I believe Paul would say, or Peter, excuse me, would say, for the remission of his sins. Before he was able to do that, he found himself having to acknowledge that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was his statement, it was his saying that he said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Isn't it interesting being mindful of the idea that our Lord would say in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32 and 33, that if you confess me before men, he will also confess before my Father. But then Jesus also says right there in verse number 33 of Matthew chapter 10, if you deny me before men, he will also deny before my Father. Just like the eunuch believed. And I pray God that every one of us this morning that are present still believe in Jesus the Christ. I pray God that every one of us that are present on this morning have a faith in Christ Jesus as our Lord, our Savior, our protector, and our provider. And I pray God that the benefit of all of your belief in Jesus Christ is a motivator for each and every one of us. It's encouraging us. It's helping us to make it from day to day. Right. Then, Jessman, I need to step outside of this for just a second and apply this term and this theme, if I may, in another way. I still believe. I still believe. I still believe in members of the body of Christ. I still believe that it's by God's providence that we're here on this morning. I still believe that there's something awesome about the possibilities as it relates to the East Chestnut Church of Christ. I still believe that God has something powerful in mind for us, but I wonder this morning if we still believe. I still believe that we're more than capable, that we can realize not based on us necessarily, but because of the strength, I believe the Apostle Paul would say, that he gains Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 13 through Jesus Christ. I still believe that God is a rewarder, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6, of those who diligently seek him. I still believe that there's some awesome stuff still to come for the East Chestnut Church of Christ. I still believe that this is a loving, caring group of people that are moving on our way to glory together. But I pray God that not only I believe that we believe, amen, somebody. All right, all right. I still believe, amen, I still believe. Think about the idea that after this conversion, the eunuch, as many went on his way. And isn't it interesting how a lot of times when folk have had an encounter with Jesus, they found themselves going on their way rejoicing. You see, I believe church this morning, we have some things to rejoice in as long as we still believe. Three things I want you to consider for the time that we have together. When I look at this matter of I still believe, I want to suggest, first of all, faithful belief. Faithful belief. It's not enough just to be a believer of something. Mm -hmm. But then it ought to move and motivate us to be faithful in terms of said belief. But then secondly, belief in what and or who? I'm going to suggest this morning, and I'm going to be so bold to suggest that if we're going to be successful as God would have us, not only are we going to have to believe in our Father, not only are we going to have to believe in our Savior, not only are we going to have to believe in the Holy Spirit and the role that He plays in this whole matter, but I believe that the people of God belief in one another. Amen, somebody. I believe as members of the body of Christ that we're in this thing together. I believe that if we're going to do what God wants us to do, it's not going to be a Sims thing. It's not going to be a her thing. It's not going to be a him thing. But it's going to be a we thing. Amen, somebody. All right. All right. When you look at this matter, I still believe, I still believe faithful belief one. Mm -hmm. I still believe belief in what or who God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and yes, even faith in one another. I still believe when you look at the idea, think about the ideology, the third subtopic suggests 
that we ought to have a demonstrated belief. It's one thing to believe something, but how do folk really know that you believe what you believe unless you're willing to demonstrate the same? We'll go to that book called the Bible mm -hmm. and show you why yes, sir. we have reached those conclusions. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you look at this matter, I still believe. Yes. First thing that we need to be mindful of is what I've labeled faithful belief. You see in Acts chapter 8, go back to the text again for our mutual consideration. That's the place that I want to define a term in particular that suggests something more than just the idea of having some consciousness or conviction about something. But I want to suggest and or encourage us that we be faithful in said belief. You see, the Bible says right there again, for emphasis sake, in verse number 37, and Philip said, here's now what Philip is going to say to this eunuch. He's going to say something to him because the eunuch has come to this place of water, and he says, see, here's water the eunuch does. What does him mean to be baptized? Well, Philip said that one of the conditions for your being able to go down in that watery grave called baptism, as we all time refer to it, is you're going to have to believe, amen, somebody. Right. Why do you say that? Because right there, verse number 37, he says, as a result of the question that's been asked by the eunuch, if thou believest with all thine heart, not only is belief necessary, but let me, let me, if I may, from verse 37, give you a definition of this term, belief. Or the term as used here by the King James is believers. But I want you to see something. It's more than just the idea that I've come to understand or know something. But I would show it to you if I might like this. And I want you to be able to see this matter. Belief as defined by the Greek in which it is translated from mm -hmm. means to have faith in or upon, uh -huh. or with respect to mm -hmm. a person or thing. Mm -hmm. It is by implication to entrust, especially one's spiritual well-being. Mm -hmm. It is the idea that one put in trust with. So when he was asked the question, or the answer came back, you may if you believe. Mm -hmm. The text wants you to understand that what God wants even us to know today it's not only do we need to understand and or have a conviction about something, but then if I understand the definition, we need to have a faith in Jesus Christ. We need to have respect for Jesus Christ. We need to have respect to Jesus Christ. We need to be those by implication that have entrusted our well-being to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It was more than just, you said I believe. But there were some things that came along with as we took on the responsibility to become members of the body of Christ, members of the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. It means that you essentially have put in trust mm -hmm. or put your trust in Jesus Christ. Right. Let me talk to some real folk this morning. Are you really trusting in Jesus? Right. Or when things get rough, do you try and figure your own way out? When things get tough, do you forget about the master and stop trying to make your own situation come to pass? Trust says that if you trust me, you'll believe in me and rely on me. And God in the person of Jesus Christ wants you to rely on him, amen, somebody. Amen. When's the last time things got thick, things got rough? Did you throw up your hands in despair and begin to try and figure out on your own? Or did you fall down on your knees and realize and understand that you're trying to place your everything in Jesus Christ. Did you really come to understand that it's never been about you in the first place? Us in and of ourselves as fallible, fleshly human beings don't really have the capacity to deal with the issues and circumstance of life. I want you to know this morning that it's only as a result of the trust you place in Jesus Christ. And I'm so bold to suggest to you this morning that every now and again, your trust is going to be tested, amen, somebody. Every now and again, some stuff going to happen in your life to not only see that you have said what you said, but to allow you to be able to demonstrate you really trust in Jesus. If you really trusted in Jesus, why would you lie on your income tax return if you really trusted in Jesus? Amen, somebody. If you really trusted in Jesus, why are you trying to finagle to get a few extra dollars if you really trust in Jesus? Because that means I place my whole and my all in him. 
I might not always understand how it's going to come. I might not always understand when it's going to come. And sometimes, if the truth be told, I don't always understand if it's going to come. But because I trust in my Savior, sometimes I have to leave it to Him and let Him do what He deems to be better. Touch the neighbor and ask him, do you really trust me? Touch the neighbor and ask him, do you really trust me? Church, when you begin to see this matter and understand the same, when we became members of the body of Christ, and that's really what Philip was saying to the eunuch. You need to have faith in him. You need to rely on him. You need to trust him. You need to be able to place your spiritual well-being in the hands of our Savior. When's the last time that you really didn't know how? You really didn't know when? You really didn't know if? That you found yourself giving it all to Jesus Christ. Listen. Not only can you see it from this place, and I want you to understand this, church, because this statement now, remember, is a statement that Philip makes to the eunuch. Mm -hmm. It's a statement that Philip makes to the eunuch prior to the eunuch being a member of the Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's easily, or I should say, it's good for us to understand that there is responsibility that comes along with us being members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. This principle now, it's not only shown in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 37, but when I look to other examples of conversion, you may have seen it in Acts chapter 16 if you paid attention to it. Because this term of which we define, this idea of belief, was also mentioned to the jailer in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Remember, it's in verse number 30 that the jailer would ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Come with me. And know that after he asked this question in verse number 30, allow me to read from the King James Version. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The Bible says in verse number 31, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Know that belief, as demonstrated in verse 31 of Acts 16, is the same belief that we saw in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 37. You might ask, but Samuel, what's the point? The point is this. Jesus wants everybody to know. And so the eunuch was told, just as the jailer was told, that you need to have faith in, upon, or with respect to Jesus Christ. You need to, by implication, entrust, especially your spiritual well-being, to our maker and our creator. You need to have a faith in our Savior that he is a Christ, and you need to put your trust in him. Amen. Not only do I want you to believe that he is, all right. well, but turn you all in all over to me. Now let me do this. I know some of us are independent people. I know in the society of which we are part of, we all time have been taught and educated to be aggressive, to get the job done, and to do what you need to. But I want to challenge you a little bit this morning and say to you quite simply that sometimes what's been instilled has been instilled to our spiritual detriment. Why do I say that? Because when you begin to move and operate outside of Jesus Christ, it's a signified reality that you don't trust the Christ that you're supposed to serve. If you trust him, you'll turn it over to him. If you trust him, you'll give it up to him. If we trust him, that's why they say it in these cases, when the question has been asked, 1630, what must I do? Trust him. Turn yourself over to him. Have your faith, your confidence, and your all in him and rely on him. Put your spiritual welfare or well-being in his hands. Well, that's belief. But then secondly, there's this. Question has to be asked. Belief in who? Or perhaps maybe we should say the son. Belief in what? One of the things, church, I think this time is showing us right now, this hard time, where it really may not matter so much about the amount of education you got. You still in the same boat as everybody else. 
we, we, we're learning, amen, somebody, that they may not really rely on how much money you put in the bank, amen, somebody. Because in more recent years, some folks discovered after putting your money in the 401k, the 401 don't exist anymore, amen, somebody. You're learning and we're seeing as we watch situations unfold and things come to pass that somebody that you had great confidence and trust in has betrayed your trust. Those that you may have one time believed in, trusted in, and had your all in are folk now that have left you to deal with your circumstances and issues on your own. I think what God is trying to let us know is the only thing you can really trust in is me, amen, somebody. Listen, listen, church, let me just tell you something. Let me just be real, very real with you. And I, I try to preach in that fashion every time I get the opportunity. Some days I can't trust myself. Amen. <laughs> the Bible has identified the idea that the heart is deceitful. The Bible says that I know that it's not in man walking to direct his own steps. Amen. The Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So listen. What I'm encouraging you to know what to do is quit trying to do it all on your own, amen, somebody. Try and turn that stuff over to God. Ask for the Lord's help. Now listen, when you ask for his help, don't just sit on your stool of do nothing and do nothing, amen, somebody. But after you've asked for his help, do all that you can until God responds to your request. It's like a man that says, I want a job, I need a job, they had somebody, and praise the God for the job, and won't go and put in an application. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You know that going to be a good sense, amen, somebody. If you want God to bless you with a job, you've got to at least be in half and go fill out some applications, amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. That's just good preaching, amen. That's just, just, that's just, that's just plain old good common sense. Say amen, amen. 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 So, so when we talk about faithful belief, and, and you know what I'm talking about, when we talk about the idea of faithful belief, you know, there are some things church you're going to have to be dedicated to. Faithful. Dedicated to. Full of this kind of belief. See, you can't put your faith on the shelf when everything's going all right. And then try and pull it off the shelf when things get tough. I think sometimes we really try and do that. Amen. I think sometimes we, we feel like, God, don't worry about it. I got it right now. Amen. And you just go on and move by. No, no, no. We never got it. If the truth be told, we need God every day, every second, every hour, every day of our lives, we need the Lord. But I want you to know and ask you the question again, do you really trust him? See, and, and you got to answer that question for yourself, honestly. Because the fact of the matter is, anybody that you don't trust, you're not going to give yourself over to. Can I use the illustration of relationship? You find yourself in a relationship and don't trust the person you're in a relationship with. You know what happens. More than likely, the relationship is kind of doomed. Because you won't give yourself. You won't allow yourself. You, you're concerned about, he won't treat me right, or she won't do right by me, and all of those kind of things. And so you hold back in terms of, and those are the kind of things that we don't want to do as it relates to our relationship with God. So belief in what? Second subtopic. Belief in what? Belief in who? Well, the Hebrew writer completed contributes like this. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, he says that without faith, here it is again now, yes, without faith, without faith, remember that, without faith, it is impossible to be, and I'm reading from the American Standard Version because I like the verbiage, without faith, it is impossible to be well-pleasing unto him. For he that cometh to God must believe, there it is again. Yes, there's that term, there's that term that speaks to the idea to have faith in by implication to entrust, to, to, to especially uh, one's spiritual well-being, to turn over to, to put in trust with. So without my capacity to turn my belief, to turn my, my trust, to turn myself over, to entrust my all to God, Amen. without my capacity to do that. Because Hebrew writer says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them. Do you really believe in him? And church, I want you to know every now and again, your belief won't be tested. Touch your neighbor and tell him, did you pass the test? Touch your neighbor and ask him, did you pass the test? <laughs> when you go back into Hebrews chapter 11, and I won't do it for uh, this morning, but when you go back into Hebrews chapter 11, there are a lot of characters that we refer to as great characters of faith. And you see any number of things that they went through that was a test, so to speak, of their faith. 
See, it's one thing to have a belief in something, but you really don't know, and I've said this before, and it still remains to be true, it reminds me of the illustration used in terms of those of us uh, that have been in school, those of us uh, that have gone to high school, that have gone to college, that have gone to elementary, whatever place that you've been in terms of education, you know about a test. And you know the reality of said test is really that you don't know how much you know until you have to face the test. Right. We study and cram and try and prepare ourselves because we know that the test is coming. Well, you really don't know how well you prepared yourself and how well you've done until the test shows up. Can I bless somebody right now? Touch your neighbor and tell me about to bless somebody right now. I'm saying to you this morning as it relates to the test in our lives that you really don't know how well prepared you are until the test shows up. The test might be that she's getting ready to leave you right now. The test might be that you're about to lose your house. Amen, somebody. The test might be that your car is up for repossession. The test might be you got more bills and you got income. Did you pass the test? Amen. Look, I work as a chaplain. You all know for the Fort Wayne Police Department. Uh, there's been a number of times that they called a chaplain because some folk couldn't deal with the test. Mm -hmm. Usually when you see me someplace, and you see me with that coat on that has chaplain on the back and uh, all that kind of stuff, it's because something has happened more than likely to somebody. I've shown up too many times when folk couldn't deal with the test that life presented. See, some of us, if you lost your job, you can call all your friends and celebrate. Amen, somebody. God fixed that. I wouldn't leave it, so he took it from me. Amen, somebody. See, some of y'all know how to deal with some tests. Amen, again. Some of you can't stand the job anyway. You just stand there because you can't find another battle right now. But what if you got fired? Amen. If you got fired, would you see that as a test? Amen, somebody. As a test to your faithfulness, your commitment, your dedication to God? Would you see it as a test in terms of your trust in God? Yes, sir. But what you do is some do. Say based on that. I can't deal with life anymore. Faith, belief in what or who. And the reason why I said the what is because some of us place our faith in stuff. As long as everything's going all right, I'm all good. As long as I drive the car I want to drive, I got the house that I got, amen, somebody. I live where I want to live. Listen, God has already demonstrated and I'll show me the only thing you need to have faith in is me. Now, listen to this, and it may sound strange to you, but I just believe it's true. Sometimes the loss of your stuff is really a test of your faith. Be careful not to put anything before God Remember, the Bible conveys the fact that we're just pilgrims. Mm -hmm. We're not intended to be here indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Our time here is fixed. Mm -hmm. Belief in God, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. Uh, but then i got to give you this one. Acts chapter 4, verse number 10 and following, talking about a belief in Jesus Christ. Now I want you to know that just like these that we have mentioned, the jailer, just like we have mentioned the unit, belief in Jesus Christ has eternal ramifications to it. That's why we appeal to men, women, boys, and girls with everything that is within us to get this word, to believe the same, and to be moved accordingly. You see, it's in Acts chapter 4, verse number 10 through verse number 12 that we convey the idea, the thought, the reality of a belief in Jesus Christ. Because in that place, the Bible says, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that in the name of Jesus Christ, touch your name and tell them there's something about his name. <laughs> the Bible says that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, now listen to this, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even in him does this man stand here before you hold. Jesus has just done a miraculous kind of thing, and this man has been healed, and now this is an opportunity to teach some folk, amen, somebody. Church, what I'm saying to the East Chestnut Church of Christ, we still got to teach some people, and opportunities come up. The next time somebody begins to witness to you how good God is, why don't you really tell them how good God is? Amen. Why don't 
don't you take the time and open the book and find the place that is written and tell them about that same God that you believe to be so good. It's the same God that's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He's the same God that is a reward of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6 of them that diligently seek him. He's the same God that has the privilege of providing salvation. He's the same God, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, that wants to add you to that saved number. Amen. Next time people begin to tell you how good God is, why don't you really take time and show them Amen. the goodness of God. Right. I still believe, Chestnut. I still believe in God the Father. And let me tell you something. When your faith in God grows weak, everything else is going to be challenged. Oh, no. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> You'll start to ask yourself questions. Yeah. I don't understand why this happened. Well, well, aren't you serving the same God I'm serving? Amen, somebody. You might not understand it, but it ain't reason to give up. You might not know how you're going to get through. You might not know how you're going to get out. But I believe that's what faith is all about. Amen, Amen somebody. Faith is the idea of having a belief and a confidence in something, although you don't always have the proof. Amen. Touch your neighbor and ask him, you got any proof? Amen. See, see, when we believe, and I'm going to show you before I go to the final point of this message, I want to show you that faith ought to be demonstrated. Yes, or right. belief yes, ought to be right. demonstrated. Back in Acts chapter 4, I got to conclude the reading there. The Bible says in verse number 11, He is a stone which was set in naught for you of the builders, which was made the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. Listen to verse number 12. And in none other, y'all get that? There's no other way to realize salvation but through Jesus Christ. I will preach that until God takes me out of here or my mind becomes some kind of way incapacitated and I can't do it no more. But as long as I can, I pray God that I always will because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. We need to tell folk that salvation is in Christ Jesus. We need to share with people and say to them that I still believe. And not only ought you have to be able to say it, but it ought to be shown in your behavior. Now, i got to give you this. i got to give you this. I think one of the challenges sometimes for us is, yet we can believe in God. We can believe in Jesus Christ. But sometimes we lose faith in people. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> now, now, you might ask, you might ask, Brother Sims, I, I don't understand. What's the significance of such a thing? When you lose faith in, when you don't have no confidence in, when you have no trust in, when you develop a dissatisfaction for mm -hmm. anything that you're not satisfied with, don't like and or care for, is not the thing that you would work for to help. <coughs> okay, you're looking at me funny. When's the last time you did anything to help your enemy? Mm -hmm. It means if nobody else in your enemy you have no faith, you have no confidence, you have no belief, amen, somebody. Perhaps it's been because of treatment, but let me tell you something. If that were it, all of us would be lost, because if I recall in Matthew chapter 27, the way that they treated my Savior, he'd have no reason to believe in, trust in, save, give himself up for nobody. Amen. Amen. Okay, you're not feeling it that way. I won't go there now, but you take your time and do it at your leisure. Just look over to Matthew chapter 5 and listen to Jesus in those Beatitudes. Bless them who curse you. Do good to them who despitefully use you. You see, when we go to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, we don't go to talk to just folk we like and or love. And I'm telling you, and I know we laugh when I say it all the time, but the fact of the matter is, if your enemy had some Jesus in him, he wouldn't be your enemy. That's a conflict, amen, somebody. Those two things cannot cohabitate. The Bible uses the term light and darkness. Light and darkness do not mingle together. Either one is present and the other is opposite or vice versa. When light comes in this room, darkness got to go. The reason and problem that you might be able to help your, your enemy with, if you can get that darkness out of it, it ain't up to you. All you got to do is share to Jesus. So the next time he don't treat you right, the next time she don't talk to you right, speak to them properly. Amen. If you're not at the point you can handle it, yeah, you might have to withdraw yourself. But realistically, the Lord wants us to be those that have an interaction with, and not only interaction with, but affection with, and infection in particular. 
When's the last time you went to the hospital and you knew somebody was contagious? Got a little nervous about going in and visiting people. Sometimes they'll have you put on all that stuff, and put on them gloves and put on that stuff and put that thing over your mouth and all that because you don't want to become infected. We need to be infecting some people. And the only way that you can be infected is you got to come in contact with those that need the infection. We can't talk about they no good. We can't talk about they ain't right. If the truth be told, they just like us. They got issues. See, baby. Yes. Uh, the last thing that I want to say to you is this. Demonstrating belief. Hebrews chapter 11, and verse number 1. Let me show you this one. Y'all remember the text from the King James Version? The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's how the King James reads. But when you look at that translation, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1 from the American Standard Version, the Bible says, Now faith is assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. You get that? Assurance of things hoped for. I don't have it, but I'm sure I'm hoping for it. All right. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And, and you know what? It's a thing that I've not been able to put my hands on. It's not a tangible situation or a circumstance. But I'm convicted by it nevertheless. Mm, that's some teaching right there. See, we're always trying to see what the tangible is. We always want to see, if that's the case, then prove it to me. Show it to me. Well, faith says that you have to believe it, although you can't see it. Right. You'll know when your faith gets weak, when your faith gets troubled. Because now you want an explanation for everything. God ain't never, nor will he ever, explain everything to us. If he did, we couldn't understand it anyway. Amen, somebody. Faith. Faithful. I still believe. A demonstrated faith. Now watch this. Faith is persuasion. Faith is credence. Faith is moral conviction of religious truth. Faith is assurance. Faith is belief. If you have then and understand the point of Hebrews 11.1 1, that faith is that persuasion, that credence, that moral conviction, that assurance, that belief. It is that assurance of things that you're hoping for. Although you can't see and can't put your hand on anything for sure, you believe it. And don't tell me we can't. <coughs> Let the weatherman say whatever he says in terms of the weather for tomorrow, you get four kings. Before the day gets here, you will prepare yourself and dress accordingly. We don't know it. Amen, somebody. Well, as a matter of fact, if you want to talk about weather, let's just talk about the wind. You don't see it. You can't put your hands on it. You can feel the effect of it. And that's what we call wind. Tell me that ain't faith. We got faith. We got things we believe in, not knowing for sure that it will come to pass. But we trust it. But we suggested that faith is demonstrated. James chapter 2, I'm getting ready to close. What does it profit, my brother? If a man say he had faith, but have not works. All I'm saying to your church is faith is a demonstration. Well, faith is a demonstration. Faith ought to be demonstrated. What does it profit, man? If a brother say, I have faith and I have not works. Now listen to this. Can that faith save him? Now this, 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 is a tough, this is a tough question, this is a tough question. Because if you really understand the question, it's gonna challenge us to be more than just folk that believe something, but we won't have to be folk that not only believe something, but do something then about what we believe. <coughs> Watch the text. If a brother sister be naked and in lack of daily food, here's the illustration. And one of you say to them, go in peace, be warm and filled. That's like saying somebody needs a coat. You got one that you can give them. And instead of doing that, you say, I'm going to pray for them. Praying is good. But if you got that extra coat in the closet, why don't you give it up? Right. A -a Amen, somebody. Faith that is real ought to be a faith that is demonstrate. 
So then he uses his illustration. He says, uh, one of them come to you, and you say, go in peace, be you warm and filled, yet give them not the things needed to the body. What does it profit? I'm reading from the American Standard Version. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Touch your neighbor and ask him, is your faith dead? Your faith Touch your neighbor and ask him, is your faith dead? Simple. Can't nobody really answer that for you but you. Yes, and the fact of the matter is, if your faith is alive and well, it ought to be demonstrated by a fruit. Amen. And when we talk about fruit, it's that which is produced by your faith. Amen. See, a faith that's demonstrated moves and causes us to work. We can't be folk that see people and see problems and see issues and see everything wrong with everybody. Because if the truth be told, all of us have been in a place where we've done something, haven't been just right, haven't been everything that God wanted us to be, but thank God for his grace and mercy. We can't be folk that look at people like critical fruit inspectors trying to find something wrong. We have to know that the next time you find yourself lacking faith in others, just remember that Jacob was a cheater. Peter had a temper. David had an affair. Noah got drunk. Jonah ran from God. Paul was a murderer. Miriam was a gossiper. Martha was a warrior. Gideon was insecure. Thomas was a doubter. Sarah was impatient. Elijah was depressed. Moses stuttered. Zacchaeus was short. Abraham was old. And Lazarus was dead. So every time you look at people that are biblical characters, they had issues, but nevertheless, Somebody said that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. I still believe. I got some issues, I got some stuff, and I got some problems, but I still believe that God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. God is a provider, God is a sustainer, God is my care, God is my provision, and with him, I still believe. How many of y'all still believe right now? How many of you know that God is a reward? How many of you believe, although you don't know how, you believe God will? Amen. We need some folk to leave out here today saying, I still believe. Amen. It's been rough. I've had some challenging days. I've had some challenging months. And maybe I've had some challenging years. But I still believe. They haven't always operated in that like I think they ought to, Troy. But I still believe in Chestnut. Amen, somebody. We are not everything we want to be. We're not where God wants us to be. But I still believe we can. Some days, church, just my hope alone is what gets me up out of the bed. Now there's some folk in the visit with us right now. All of this in Christ Jesus. And I'm suggesting to you too that you need to believe. And then when you get in and believe, don't let nobody steal your belief. Amen. Don't let nothing take you away from your foundation, your rock, your place. And the Bible refers to him as the chief cornerstone. Yes. He who is the head of the church and the savior of the body. Yes. Him that gave his own life, Acts chapter 20 and verse number 28. For all of us, yes. I still believe. Amen. I still believe he can save church. I still believe it don't make no bad, no difference how bad you are, how tough you've been, and how low you got. I still believe he can. I still believe that he can bring folk that are struggling with issues and stuff up out of the muck and mire and save you, turn you around, and get you on your way. I still believe he's the God that you need, even if you don't believe it right now. I still believe that he is, and he will. I wonder what you believe right now. You're not a member of the church of Christ. We paused, we visited, we vacationed momentarily this morning in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, at verse number 30, when the jailer asked the question, what must I do to be saved? Stop. You're not a member of the Church of Christ this morning. You need to believe. As a matter of fact, the jailer was told in verse 31, not only do you need to believe, but you and your entire household. Right. Acts chapter 16 and verse number 31. But then if you keep reading, You'll also be able to see that all of them were baptized. He and his entire house. Why do I say that? Because I want you to know this morning when you ask the question, what must I do? Acts chapter 2 and verse number 37. Peter and Griffin, what shall we do? Was asked, what do you need to do? Peter would say in verse number 38 of Acts 2, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What do you need to do? 
You've heard the word. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. The Bible says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now you've heard it. I pray God you believe that which you've heard. Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6. Remember God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. God wants you to believe that he is. Remember Jesus said, if you confess me before men. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. Him I confess before my father. Now you've heard it. I wonder if you believe it. If you're willing to repent of your sins. And listen, repent means to have a change of heart that leads to a change of action. That's why we keep going back to the word. Because I understand the Hebrew writer said that the word of God is powerful. Sharper than any two-way sword. If you're going to be convinced and convicted, if you're going to be pricked this morning, it won't be because of me and my two illustrations. It'll be because of the word. Are you willing to have a change of heart that leads to a change of action? Are you willing to repent? To confess, to acknowledge that Jesus Christ, as we stated earlier, Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. And to be baptized. Why, preacher? Why should I be baptized? Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38, for the remission of your sins. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38, that you might receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why should you be baptized this morning? First Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, that you might be saved. Why should you be baptized this morning? Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and 27, that 26, that you might be by faith a child of God. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, you came to that position or condition as a result of being baptized. Why should you do that? Why should you believe John chapter 3? Because Jesus said you must be born again. He would say in John 3, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. Nicodemus didn't understand it, but I pray God you do. And then live faithful. We need to always remind people to see just becoming a member of the Lord's church, that's only the start. First Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. Know when you obey God, Satan sure don't get busy. We've baptized folk and folk leave here frustrated because after they got baptized, all hell broke loose. You get that? Yeah. Emphasis on hell. Because yeah. the God of this world, this world, Satan, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8, as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he made a power. When you obeyed God and became a child of God, Satan said, I've got to get busy. <laughs> I still believe. As long as God leads me in my right mind, I believe this day. Always believe. For those of us that are members of the body of Christ, I pray God you still believe. And you ain't got to tell nobody nothing. All they got to do is watch you long enough. Amen. And that'll be the true test as to whether or not you believe or not. Amen. Perhaps you need to be stronger. Perhaps you want to be better. This is a good time. We're leaving in 2012, getting ready to go in 2013. This is a good time to dedicate yourself. This is a good time to say, man, you know what? I, I, I struggled a little bit in 12, but I think 13 is going to be a bad year for you. Yes. And claim that. Yes. Folk already talked about it. It's 2013. You know, the 13 is a negative connotation that he used to fix the 13. Folk already talking about, I don't know, 13. And, you know, that's bad. It's, it's bad luck. All of it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself 13 is going to be bad, guess what? I'm claiming a good year in Jesus. Amen. 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 So maybe you want to, maybe you want to start your new year. We're going to have a new program tomorrow. But maybe you're ready to do it today. Maybe you're ready. Maybe you're ready to say, man, this is my time. This is my time. I, I've been messing around too long. I've struggled with stuff. My faith has been weak. My beliefs have struggled. Maybe this is the time for you to decide today. I'm moving on from this day forward like nobody's business. You want to be a member of the Church of Christ? Come right now. Member of the Body of Christ in Equal? Come right now. And together we stand. I'm a member of Christ.